Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today. I'm Volodymyr Solohub. Join me now to discuss the resignation of the Minister of Economy of Ukraine as the Director for the Department of International Cooperation at the Ministry of Economy, Ms. Olena Trahub. Ms. Trahub, welcome to Ukraine Today. Thank you, Volodymyr. Uh, Ms. Trahub, so the Minister of Economy announced his resignation today. What can you tell us about his reasons? Well, I think he was pretty open about his reasons. Um, uh, basically, um, he was in the situation where he could not continue working as a minister. When, um, you know, when we were working in the ministry, we always felt the resistance of the system. We always felt that all the elites, they don't really want those, you know, radical reforms that we wanted. But then at some point, like when uh, two days or so ago, he was deprived of his uh, security detail. This is, I think, ever, first time ever in history when acting minister is deprived of his security detail. And because he basically agrees to play along with the, you know, corrupt officials in the government. Uh, when signals like this are given, it means basically that he cannot continue as a minister because he uh, doesn't have political cover anymore. And same thing for his team. So do you mean that he started feeling unsafe? Um, well, uh, you see, what we were doing at the ministry, uh, we were exposing a lot of corruption schemes and we were not going public about them, but we were working with uh, many people in law enforcement. And, uh, of course, uh, minister needs protection. I think even I need protection. A lot of members of our team need protection. Uh, but we also, and uh, when he was uh, said that, uh, and when he said uh, he was imposed this, tr they were tried to impose the decision on him to appoint uh, a person who was connected to Kononenko from uh, Blok Poroshenko, who was connected to uh, this Kononenko, uh, and this person was supposed to become our first deputy minister responsible for all state-owned enterprise and Mavtokas. Uh, this was like very direct pressure, and this uh, did not happen before to him. Some small pressures were happening comparing to this one. So basically, basically, you were feeling pressure throughout the entire period of your, of your work, but then the pressure increased. Is that what it, you're saying? The pressure went out of control. So, Mr. Rupa, just on Friday, we were talking to the, ministry, uh, to, to the minister about the privatization plans, and nothing hinted, uh, the minister did not hint in any way that he was planning to resign. So in your opinion, did this all happen over the weekend? He, I think uh, we felt a huge resistance of the system and we felt that we are slow because of all this resistance. But we still, we wanted to go on. We didn't want to give up. So how bad was the pressure? You said it was constant. Throughout all this time? Of course, uh, and it was not only pressure, it was just blockage of our initiatives. Just look how many of our uh, uh, law drafts are just sitting on shelves in the parliament or even uh, at Arseniy Yatsenyuk's office. And uh, it's not approved, it's not signed. And uh, so uh, this was just blockage. And then the pressure was that, um, you know, that he really was dealing with this big ticket item, the state-owned enterprise reform. This is a really big uh, thing for Ukraine because this is how all these corrupt oligarchs, uh, how they nourish themselves from the wealth of, the Ukraine, of Ukraine. And he was trying to change that and he, they didn't let him do it. Um, Minister Abramovich has accused uh, one of the leaders of the, um, the President Poroshenko's uh, bloc mm -hmm. in the parliament, uh, Ihor Kononenko, at trying to appoint his person as his deputy. Is this a customary practice within the government of appointing the right people as deputies of even the most reformist ministers? Absolutely. Uh, well. This is the practice that has been, you know, practiced in Ukraine throughout, I think, 20 years. But it doesn't work with uh, our minister because he's a Western manager. And uh, I just see how we were working with him when he, for example, uh, invited me to work at the ministry. He empowered me. He trusted me based on my experience, based on my... Um, uh, you know, values, and he let me do my work, and he backed me always. The same thing for him, for his mentality. When he's asked by the president faction to be the minister, he is empowered. 
But unfortunately, this mentality didn't work in Ukrainian conditions because... Well, talking about the mentality, didn't he realize where he was going, what he was getting himself into? Uh, not fully. I think uh, he was to some extent uh, idealist. He, he's an, an idealistic person. And he, I know that he truly wanted to um, help Ukraine. He truly wanted to reform and he truly wanted to fight corruption. He's not a talker, he's a doer. And uh, he So basically he thought that he would come to the, in, into the government, he would be uh, isolated from all the realities of Ukrainian uh, politics, he would be isolated from all the realities of Ukrainian corrupt practice of doing business in Ukraine, and he would be able to, to do everything his own way. Well, I think uh, the Minister of Economy has that much power and not more, right? And he was presuming that he would have some space to move around, some space to do things. But when this space started to shrink, he understood that he cannot go beyond his powers. And he understood there are interests, very big interests in Ukraine that keep this country where it is. But then when, when this power started to shrink and when this space started to shrink to the uh, point where he couldn't tolerate it, he just left. Although, as I said, he didn't plan it. In your opinion, uh, should the minister have continued fighting this pressure even after this, this incident with uh, trying to impose mm -hmm. the right people as his deputies? Because uh, uh, you, ju you just said mm -hmm. it, it, this, this, this pressure, this resistance has been lasting for months throughout the entire period of, um, of, his being, of, his, of, his, of his office. So why did he decide to resign now and not continue fighting? Um, well, because uh, he was nominated by the president's uh, faction, yes? And if uh, people from the faction want this kind of political favor from him to appoint this person and also to keep basically stealing from the state-owned enterprise. I mean, how can, he, how can he represent this faction? You know, if uh, he just basically had, uh, I think, some barrier, some kind of uh, red line, and this red line just happened. Mr. Hoop, does this incident indicate that corruption is deeply, in your opinion, that it's deeply rooted in the president's own fraction. I basically um, want to say that um, uh, the international community, the international donors that I'm working with, uh, many of them understand Ukraine well, and they understand that um, elites uh, from like old generation who came to lead this country, they cannot change overnight, and they understand that we were fighting uh, the system from within. Uh, and I just want to say that, yes, corruption is rooted and international community right now should pressure the leadership of Ukraine, the president, uh, the parliament, the prime minister more than ever to actually fight this corruption and because they're going to fight it only under pressure. Mr. Hoop, do you think that the president is oblivious of this fact or he's purposely ignoring it? Well, I think uh, the president uh, should speak uh, to the public about what has happened because uh, our minister just accused his whip in the, gov in the parliament of, uh, you know, huge corruption and the president should of course express and say I didn't know about it or I knew about it so I shouldn't speculate about it. Well, but you were in the government for many months. You have an understanding of how things work. So does the person who is on the top, was he involved or he did not know? Uh, it was his responsibility as a president to know such things. Sounds like some very disturbing facts, Mr. Hoop. Many thanks for joining us today. We'll be following this story really closely. We were discussing the resignation of Minister of Economy, Mr. Ivaras Abramovichus, with the Director of the Department of Foreign Cooperation of the Ministry of Economy of Ukraine, Mr. Anatra Hoop, Anvalino Thank you for watching Ukraine Today.